we've got another question that I'd like to answer. I've been asking people recently if they've heard arguments against electric vehicles. Like, like, what are good reasons to not get EVs? Or what have you heard people using as a reason to not get an electric vehicle? And I've heard a bunch of like terrible, stupid reasons why you shouldn't get an EV. Like they're not, they don't do anything for the climate, which they do. Uh, and I have heard some good ones. Like I don't have a way to charge it at home, which if you don't have a way to charge it at home, you should not get an EV. That's one of the main benefits. But I have heard a bunch of times that EVs are bad in, like, particularly bad when it comes to the release of microplastics. And this is a concern for me because I think that there is a chance, like, it's not entirely clear yet, but there's a, a chance that microplastics are going to be a big deal, both environmentally and for the health of humans in the future. I don't know the extent to which that will be the case, but they seem bad. And are tires a big piece of microplastics? And if so, do electric vehicles make that worse in some way? So I did a little bit of research on this earlier today, and I want to walk you through what I've done so far and continue down my path of trying to learn more. I typed into Google car tires EV plastics, and I found this thing from Yell E360. I trust Yell E360. I think they do a fairly good job. Jim Robbins here, September 19th, 2023, fairly recent. And I'm also going to open up okay, sheets to keep track of claims and the extent to which the claims are substantiated. So to start off, they're going to be like tires, plastics, and then there's going to be the second category here, which is plastics bad. And then I think the third category is going to be like EVs worse. Because ultimately, uh, if if car tires are bad for the environment, that's a, that's a thing that's bad about cars, not so much a thing that's bad about EVs. I feel like this gets completed a fair amount. I oftentimes will be like, I love my EV and people will be mad at me. And I'll be like, why? And they'd be like, you should be taking the bus. And I'm like, well, I'm not. Like, I, I wouldn't be if I didn't have an EV. That's not what happens. <laughs> what the fuck? Pom Pom, did you just fall? Why would you do that? This is Pom Pom. If you know about Pom Pom, then your life is better than if you don't. Real quick though, maybe you're looking around and you're seeing some relatively inexpensive used electric vehicles right now and you're thinking maybe I might want to get one of those myself and that's why you're watching a video like this one. But maybe you want to save a little money first for that down payment. Well, Rocket Money can help you make sure that you're not wasting money on stuff that you don't use and that you are working toward meeting your goal of that down payment. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel your subscriptions, lower your bills, manage your money better. It's kind of shockingly easy to set up and it will show you exactly how much you spend on recurring transactions every year and it will give you the ability to cancel the things that you don't use sometimes just with a couple of clicks also sometimes rocket money can help you renegotiate some of the prices i personally have begun to use rocket money to keep track of my silly little impulsive decisions and then unmake the ones that i regret having made it's fantastic it's pretty, it's simple, and it can be as powerful as you want it to be. Rocket Money has saved its customers up to $740 a year when they use all of the features with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. To save more and spend less, join over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Hank Green or click the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash Hank Green to get started for free. So tires, plastics, so is there a link between tires and plastics? First subhead here, 78% of ocean microplastics are synthetic tire rubber, according to one estimate. But I think also it is important to note that uh, how you define what a microplastic is is going to be important. So where did this come from? So can we type in 78 again and see? No, 70? Yeah. Okay. A report by the Pew Charitable Trust also are a very legitimate organization. We've got we've got an expert panel here. We've got endorsements. I mean, this is the guy who's founded Break Free from Plastic, so I don't know, but we've got CEO, Impact Advisory Finance of Credit Suisse, UN Undersecretary General and Executive Director for the UNEP. So I think probably we've got some good voices on this thing, but we're gonna start out by searching for tire. Uh, and okay, that's an end tire. Oh, I put a space before tire, now there's nothing. That doesn't seem right. That <laughs> they definitely said that this was the tire one. Um, what's happening? Oh, <laughs> tire with a Y, because apparently this is a British report. Ooh, they did a graphic for me. Thank you. Forty percent of today's global plastic waste ends up in the environment. That. What does that mean in the environment? That seems extremely high if, if you don't mean also landfills. Oh, okay. 11% of leakage is microplastic in 2016. So 78% so of ocean microplastics 
are synthetic tire rubber, whereas this, whereas 11% of leakage is microplastics. I, which is why, like, I was like, 78% seems astoundingly high to me because I have heard that even maybe a majority of ocean plastics are from the fishing industry. Nets, largely nets, which is a terrible thing to have in the ocean, but discarded nets that, that get caught on something and then they have to be dis uh, abandoned. My point is, uh, we're not like a net would not be a microplastic. So in terms of mass, the majority of the plastics is going to be large pieces of plastic. But in terms of microplastics, which is going to have some kind of size cutoff, the majority of that is tire particles. Is that by individual particle or mass? If it was by individual particle, it would be easier to get higher. If it's by mass, then I would say that that's an even bigger deal. But let's search for 78, 78%. There's just one. Tire dust contributes 78% of microplastics leakage by mass. And that's that's a million trillion particles, which is a lot. So we've got both the number of particles. Uh, so pellets is 10 trillion particles, but a million trillion particles is, is, so it's even more by number of particles, but it is still a majority just by mass. So I am willing to say, that based on this, if this analysis, I've got to go ahead and give the benefit of the doubt to the analysis. I don't know how they did the analysis, but if I'm going to trust anybody, this looks like a pretty trustable report. I'm going to say tires, plastics. Yes, 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 yes. That's going to be a big many yeses. So plastics, bad. Now this one, like we're not going to get to the bottom of in this video. Plastics, bad. Definitely some plastics are bad and definitely some amount of bad plastics in human bodies. Definitely some amount of bad. We do not know how, like what size amount of bad. We have been living in a world with a lot of tire dust for a very long time. We have been living in a world with a lot of plastic bottles for, I don't know, 30 or 40 years. If microplastics were carcinogenic in some way, you would expect to see it in the colon. It's a very sensitive tissue that is exposed to the things that are go into the mouth. And then lung cancer is also you would would see as a sensitive tissue that is exposed to things that are breathed in. Tire sized microparticle microplastics would definitely be able to be breathed in, especially if you're living near a road or an interstate or if you go to lots of events where they burn out their tires, which a lot of young people do. And that's an important thing to note here that like micro, like the plastics released from tires is gonna be much higher for a car that is driving very aggressively, going around turns very fast, leaving marks on the road than it will be for a car that is driven, driven typically. But the vast majority of cars are driven typically. And so the vast majority of microplastics are likely coming from tires. Now. This thing I have heard is that because EVs tend to be heavier, they will release more microplastics than other uh, things. And I think that this is also mentioned in this article. According to emissions analytics, cars in the US emit on average five pounds of tire particles a year. Moreover, tire emissions from electric vehicles are 20% higher than those from fossil fuel vehicles. EVs weigh more and have greater torque, which means tires wear out faster. So this is an interesting claim. Tires wear out faster. Do EVs wear out tires faster? It's right there. EV tires wear out faster, but how long do they last varies. Uh, this is Firestone Complete Auto. I guess I trust Fire... I do not trust the AI overview yet at all. And in some cases, 20% faster. Where's this coming from? There's a common misconception related to electric cars. In reality, tires will last for a long time. <laughs> okay, so I'm not getting anything, any straight information here. Driving all winter took less than one millimeter off the tires. So this guy runs a tire company. Runs Nokian Tires. Miko Liukula... Miko, Miko, Miko Liukula? Miko Liukula. That's an awesome name, Miko Liukula. We've also got Matty Mori. They have such good names. Rotating once per winter will pay off. Uh, rotating once a winter? That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Who do you think I am? One of the reasons I got an EV is so that I don't have to do maintenance. <laughs> Miko wants to emphasize a common misconception related to EVs. Tires is not true. Although electric vehicles have plenty of power and torque, they are not particularly demanding on tires. The opposite, in fact, is true. Okay, well, I mean, this is just a guy saying something, but but in what way is it the opposite? But where did the thing come from that everybody is talking about with the 20%? There has to be something else to this. Oh yeah, in the original thing, they said it was a thing from Emissions Analytics. Emissions Analytics, tire wear EVs. From Emissions Analytics, the original study by some Distance, the research emissions analytics published in early 2020. Okay, well, I don't know what, are you, now they're referencing a previous study. I need this study, my boy. Oh, I guess it's right here. Oh, come on. 
Tell me how you did the study, though. Tire wear, aggressive legal driving. I'd love to see what aggressive legal driving looks like. Tire wear, normal driving. So I would say that close to 100% of people use normal driving, and aggressive driving is pretty rare. I'd say that a lot of people who are the kinds of people who buy high-torque EVs probably do that aggressive driving, but like most people who buy a Tesla are not in it. They're in it to get to work. They're not in it to burn rubber. And burning rubber is going to be the greatest culprit. Additional tire wear with 500 kilograms of mass. So this is the additional tire wear with 500 kilograms of mass. Is additional tire war plus 500 kilograms of vehicle mass, is that the EV's case? In which case, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> if you tested it by just putting an extra 500 kilograms in the trunk and then driving that non-EV, like in an aggressive way, I'm gonna be mad about that. Because <laughs> that's not, that's not a, that's not a good way to do that test. Particle mass emissions per kilometer. Tire wear, aggressive legal driving. Um, 5 million, no, 5,760. That's a lot. And then normal, oh, this is, oh my God. This is a logarithmic chart. It's logarithmic, oh my God. I'm so dumb. Okay. So, so the additional 500 kilograms is going to be, um, one, two, three, four orders of magnitude less than aggressive driving. Aggressive driving clearly is the culprit here. And once again, I will say 99% of people who are driving are normal driving. So we've got, we've got upwards of 5 million. So, so, uh, tire mass emissions, milligrams per kilogram kilometer uh, logarithmic scale. It says right there. This is They're not hiding something. This is my fault. You've got 10 milligrams being the additional tire wear. Yeah, and then you got 5,000 being driving aggressively. So... So if you put those... Uh, so if you put that... I mean, it does seem to me like they just used the same car and stuck 500 additional kilograms in the vehicle. That's not a great test. You should have tested it, uh, two cars that have roughly the same like interior volume, like a Tesla Model 3 and a Honda Civic next to each other and just do that rather than testing a, like a gas powered car with an additional 500 kil kilograms of, of mass. With that extra mass, you've got an extra 7.67 milligrams of tire per, of, of wear per kilometer. And that's gonna be on top of the new tire wear of 73. So it then increased it by about 10%. I don't see 20% on here. I do see 10%. I see a 10% increase, uh, assuming that this additional tire wear was on a new tire rather than a, a used tire. The aggressive legal driving is the result from 2020, which was derived from a Volkswagen Golf driven at legal road speeds on a track, fast cornering and maximum permitted payload in the vehicle. <laughs> they really maxed it out there. So they, they drove it aggressively with all of the weight they could fit inside of the car. I think, I think that saying that EV drivers are, because they have access to the additional torque, are going to be driving their cars like nuts are, is silly. And also most EVs will not be like this. We're doing this with the new EVs because people are obsessed with their brand new cars having some advantage over other cars. In the future, they'll just be like the bolt. A half ton of battery rate weight can result in tire emissions that are almost 400 more times greater than real world tailpipe emissions. Everything else being equal. Why are you comparing it to tailpipe emissions and not to regular cars? All right, I was working on this and I, I feel like this is an important point that I kind of glossed over when I was just filming because the thing I kept hearing was EVs are 400 times worse than gas powered cars, but that is not what the study says. It says that the particulate emissions from the tires of EVs are 400 times worse than the particulate emissions from the tailpipes of gas powered cars, which does not include the tires of the gas powered cars. Of course, tires are gonna have more particulate emissions than a modern gasoline engine. Tires lose particles because they're made of particles. Whereas when you burn gasoline, the ideal thing that comes out isn't particles, it's gases like carbon dioxide and occasionally some other stuff that might cause some smog. You know, sulfur dioxide is a gas. Carbon dioxide is a gas. Nitrogen oxides are gases. But of course there are also particulate emissions from vehicle tailpipes and those are important. But I think it is a little bit weird to compare tires to exhaust pipes in general. But the bigger point here is that the 
talking point that I was hearing is that EVs are 400 times worse than gas-powered cars when it comes to particulate emissions. That's not true. Only if you don't count the tires from the gas cars, which they also have. Now, let us continue with the video. Nevertheless, it's important to say that a gentle battery electric vehicle driver with the benefit of regenerative braking can more than cancel out tire wear emissions from the additional weight of their vehicle to achieve the lower tire wear than an internal combustion engine driven badly. So yeah, uh, um, I am going to say plastic's bad, probably. And then on EV's worse, I'm going to say like, meh, meh, I don't know. Like not really. This, this is the actual science that got done. Everybody else is just people saying things. Like there was this guy from the tire rack saying 20% wear is expected. This guy from Nokian Tires saying, in fact, that EVs will be better on tire wear. And then there's an actual study that put a 500 kilogram weight into a gas powered car and noticed that indeed the heavier car, which did not have tires designed for that extra weight, but whatever, did indeed have seven more milligrams per kilometer of tire wear. Driven the same way, I, ass I assume, using normal driving, whereas by far, on this logarithmic scale, the thing to be most worried about is this aggressive legal driving. And I, I assume, maybe, that the authors of this report are like, if people have access to the torque, then they will be constantly using it. They won't be. I mean, I live in Montana. People who are driving aggressively and peeling out are in big trucks. They're in big trucks. And their big trucks weigh more than my Bolt does. You, you know that. And how much does the Bolt weigh? Bolt weight. Uh -huh. Chevy. <laughs> Curb weight is the EUV, that's the one I have, is 3,700 pounds. And then my other car, which is obviously a bigger car, weighs about the same because of the battery. So a Honda CRV weighs more, like the same, about the same amount as a Chevy Bolt. So there's extra, there's definitely some extra mass in that Bolt that you would not have if it weren't for the battery. So I'm gonna revise that to probably a little bit. EVs are probably a little bit worse at the plastics. And I'm gonna say definitively to all of you out there, smaller cars are better and the smallest car is a bike. <laughs> Thanks for watching.